What's going on, guys? It's David here, and I'd like to welcome you guys to another episode of This Week in CrossFit. Oh, oh, oh. Let's go! Fast feet! And if this is your first time checking out the show, I just want to thank you for taking some time out of your day to listen to me ramble about all things CrossFit. And if you enjoyed what you're watching today, make sure you hit that like button and the subscribe button because that helps me know that what I'm doing is helpful for you, that you're enjoying and you're being entertained. But without further ado, let's get into today's topics. And if you've been wondering what it is that you need to know in order to take the CrossFit open by storm, Today I'm going to give you a little info on the seven movements that you need to know for crushing the CrossFit Open. Now this, all this information I do want to preface was put together by wadprep.com and I've got their info down below in the description of this video. But they put together a great and comprehensive blog article on everything you need to know in terms of movements that will be featured in or likely to be featured in the CrossFit Open. And this comes down to about 19 movements, but seven movements that have a 100% chance of being featured in the Open. Movement number one, double unders. Movement number two, muscle ups. Movement number three, toes to bars. Movement number four, wall balls. Movement number five, thrusters. Movement number six, chest to bar pull ups. And movement number seven, snatches. Now I do want to preface and say that these these movements shouldn't be the only movements that you focus on. As we know, and as Dave Castro has a history of, always throwing curveballs at us each CrossFit Open. So making sure that you cover your bases and have a proficient understanding of each movement is obviously what's going to give you an edge over just focusing on these seven movements. Because as everybody knows, last year for the first time we got dumbbell snatches. We had never seen dumbbells before in an Open workout. So the best course of action in regards for prepping for the Open is actually just focusing on being as proficient as possible in every single movement that you can be proficient in. Again, just click the link down below and you'll see the full list of all the movements as well as the likelihood of each of these movements being featured in the open, as well as they provide some more tips and tricks on how to better prepare. And speaking of getting ready for the open, if you're looking for a CrossFit program to follow, I put together a resource for you guys, free 30 day trial of hybrid performance method programming. I'll send you a link once you shoot me an email. So I'm gonna pass the question off to you guys. With the 19 movements that we know have a high likelihood of being presented in the open this year, and with today's second story of the day, we have something that's a little bit more controversial. Last December, British Olympic weightlifter Sonny Webster was placed on a four-year ban from WADA for testing positive for performance-enhancing drugs. Funny thing about that is four weeks now after that announcement from WADA, Sonny Webster has officially announced that he will be competing in CrossFit. Now there's a couple things that come to mind when it comes to this whole news piece for today. Now in the past when he found out that he had tested positive, Sonny Webster did express you know, concern. He expressed uh, disappointment in the fact that he did test positive. He said that he didn't know what would have caused him to test positive, and so he was bummed out about that. But in this message, it didn't seem like there was any instance or any indication that you know the reason why he's switching to CrossFit is because of the fact that he was banned from weightlifting. Because of the you know, when you take it into consideration, I mean, what else will he do? He can't compete as a high-level weightlifter. He's still a young guy. There's a lot of guys his age, I think he's around 22 or 23, but there's a lot of guys that are his age that are still competing on the Olympic level. And that now that he can't compete for the next four years, what else is he gonna apply his talents to? The only thing that makes sense for him to apply his skills to is CrossFit. Competitive CrossFit requires to some degree um, a competent level in weightlifting. If you aren't good at weightlifting and you want to be a competitive CrossFitter, you have a huge disadvantage. Weightlifting is all about power distribution, power efficiency, how to move things in the most efficient manner from the ground to overhead. Somebody who's competed at the 2016 Rio Olympics definitely would qualify as somebody who could be very proficient in CrossFit. So it only makes sense that he would make this transition. Second funny thing about the situation is that in 2016, he actually came out and spoke against other athletes, particularly Russian athletes, for competing and also testing positive for using performance enhancing drugs. I think a car broke down. Miss, are you okay? Hey, you who 
romance is this? And he actually came out and stated that he believes that anybody who tests positive should be banned for life for competing in the Olympics. So now here we have an athlete who has said all these statements, now has tested positive for PEDs, and now has decided that he's going to compete in CrossFit. Do you guys have any... Hey, yo, who man is this? Now there's, seems like there's some sort of disconnect here, tracking back on the words that he stated, and he doesn't actually believe what it is that he stated, because who knows, maybe in 2016, he was actually on PEDs at the time, and there's a good chance that he was on PEDs at the time. A lot of high-level athletes on the Olympic platform are on PEDs. There are some that aren't. It's just hard to tell nowadays because there's so many drugs that can leave your system in a matter of weeks and months and even days. So who knows who's on drugs, who knows who's not on drugs. And with him making these statements, it it, it only seems very contradictory that he's making these statements. And, you know, who knows how well he will do in the CrossFit Open. You know, I wish him the best. Somebody who's competitive like he is, it, it, again, like I said, it makes sense for him to make this decision. Decision. The only thing though is that the last time this happened with a weightlifter who tested positive who also competed in CrossFit was Sheree Chan who tested positive back in 2016 as well. She tested positive for PEDs and at that time received a four year ban from CrossFit competition um, and that was a ban that was given to her from USA Weightlifting so uh, the fact that CrossFit honored that ban means that it only makes sense for CrossFit to honor this ban. Now, time will only tell if CrossFit will actually honor that ban and ban him from competitive CrossFit competition, but there are a ton of other CrossFit competitions that he could do that are more local, not necessarily competing on the you know highest level of CrossFit, but it's obvious that's what he wants to do. But again, time will only tell if he'll actually be qualified to compete in the CrossFit games, but we'll see what level he's able to make it at. We'll see if he's able to make it to the regionals or even to the games itself if he's going to go individual or if he's going to go team time will only tell but i want to know from you guys what do you think do you think he should qualify and be allowed to compete in the crossfit games or should he not qualify should crossfit ban him from competing in crossfit for the next four years as well because who knows maybe he he'll come into crossfit and still compete and still be on ped but again in the comments below let me know do you think he should be allowed to compete in crossfit do you think he should be banned from crossfit you guys decide and moving on in case you missed it today i don't know if you guys knew but today's workout of the day was 500 wall balls per time that was actually the workout that daniel petro did because he lost a bet he bet his friend that he would actually have a girl he didn't end up having a girl who lost the bet and the bet was 500 wall balls for time. Now the funny thing about that, or the cool thing about that, is he finished it in 2644, which is actually pretty fast when you consider how many times or how long it would take the average person to do Karen. And when you factor in how fast he's actually moving, that's about 18 wall balls a minute, which is fairly quick. I mean, I know for myself, I'm probably only doing 10, maybe 15 wall balls in a minute, maybe 20. I've done 40 wall balls once in my entire life and I've never done that ever again. That was in competition. So it's a different scenario, but in training, for somebody to do 18 wall balls a minute, that's to do that consistently that's pretty impressive let me know is this a workout you guys would try how fast do you guys think you would be able to do it i will not be doing this but actually i want to challenge one of you guys to do it if you one of you guys can do 500 wall balls for time in under 30 minutes i'll send you a can of lacroix this week we also have a new episode of mayhem monday which isn't actually filmed on monday it's actually filmed on other days of the week which is kind of funny because they bring that up in many of the episodes frequently but this week we have a part one of the i think it's going to be a multiple part series on training with rich which is rich's event where you can pay a thousand dollars you show up to his gym you get to train with him for th three days which for most people i wouldn't say it's worth spending the thousand dollars because there's many other things that you could spend a thousand dollars on you could spend a thousand dollars on a you saw level one cert which actually you could buy two of you could spend a thousand dollars on a crossfit level one which then you can go coach and make more money at 
you see where I'm going with this. There's a lot of other things, but for some people it could actually be enjoyable. I mean, if you have excess money that you want to toss out, why not go spend three days with Rich? It seems pretty interesting. If this is a training camp that you want to check out, I would definitely make sure that you check out this video because then you would at least know what it is that you're getting yourself into. And also, as of the release of this episode of This Week in Fitness, we have the trailer for the new behind the scenes CrossFit documentary, which is different from the behind the scenes games 2017 documentary that gets produced every day. There's a lot of documentaries that CrossFit puts, puts out, but this is the official one that you can watch on Netflix, you can watch on iTunes. This is the one that everybody waits for every single year. And this year is actually kind of controversial, especially with Ricky Girard who got banned and a bunch of different medals got swapped around. It's definitely very interesting. The comment section on the Instagram post got actually pretty interesting. So. I can't actually show you the trailer for it because it hasn't been released yet, but I will leave a link down below to where you can go watch it. And then we also have part one of the YouTube documentary series of Behind the Games for last year. Again, like I said, this gets really, really confusing, but this is just more of a very casual and informative multi-part CrossFit Games series. Again, I'm getting confused sharing with this stuff with you guys because there's so much stuff going on at CrossFit, but um, that is actually up, which you can actually watch. You can click the link down below to watch that. But And that's gonna be it for today's episode of This Week in CrossFit. Like I said a little while ago, it's you know when the season has not started, it's kind of hard to find out what's going on in the world of CrossFit. And so that's the whole idea behind the, this show is to provide you guys with the content that you guys are looking for to keep you guys updated, whether it's tips and tricks on how to improve your fitness, whether it's new content from other creators that are putting stuff out. I want to create a hub for you guys. I'm also working on some new content, new series that are going to be featured on the channel. I'm just trying to figure out the timing for all this stuff with balancing work and everything else that happens in life. Also guys, last week I put out a challenge that we have been so close to hitting 100 subscribers for a couple weeks now and I really want us to hit 100 subscribers I want to grow this community and we are only two subscribers as of the posting of this video so if you can do me a favor and hit that subscribe button so we can hit 100 subscribers only two of you guys I know that on average about 100 of you guys watch this series so only two of you guys like not even 1% of you guys needs to hit that subscribe button can you do that can you hit that that button right down there that's like right there it says subscribe with a little box and the arrow in it hit that subscribe button let's get 200 subscribers this is all for you guys I'm doing this all for you I love you guys and I don't even have a Cory today so you know today's a rough day but with that guys we are gonna end the show there hope you guys enjoyed it if you did make sure you hit that like button and that subscribe button and as always may your coffee be black and your barbells be heavy and as always the descriptions the link to everything are going to be in the description down below i'll see you guys in the what's going on guys so right now i'm in the middle of editing this video that you guys are watching right now but i totally forgot to ask you guys what the question of the day is so the question of the day would you rather win the crossfit games five times on a team or would you rather win the crossfit games once as an individual let me know in the comments down below